Okay, we've got another review for you here. We're going to be looking at this. This is a 7 watt guitar amplifier from Fender. It's the Fender Passport Mini. There aren't many reviews of this on the internet, so I wanted to create one that's hopefully going to be helpful if you're thinking about getting this. This is good for guitarists mainly, um, if you're a singer-songwriter. I bought this because I have a ukulele that I want to plug into it. So we're going to listen to a ukulele through it as well as guitar. We're going to see what the inbuilt uh, effects are like, and hopefully you'll find this useful. The Fender Passport Mini is designed to be a practice amp that's suitable for busking and small life performances. It's a 7 watt amplifier with two channels, one for guitar and the other for XLR and jack input for vocals or additional instruments. It has an auxiliary input and headphone jack too. The guitar channel comes with a full range of effects such as distortions, reverb, chorus, delay, tremolo and so on. Volume, tone and reverb can be controlled on the microphone instrument channel. Finally, there is a USB input that allows you to program the amplifier's effects with your computer, as well as provide you with a digital recording interface. For an amplifier that's less than £100, that's certainly some impressive specs. So let's have a tour of the amp to see how everything is controlled and how it works. Looking at the top, we can see three sections. The middle section is where you plug in your guitar, and as you can see, you're able to control volume, change your preset, and change effects on the fly. Unfortunately, there is no tone control. You're reliant upon programming your amp sound using your computer and the Fender Fuse software. At the end, you can see a button that provides a tuner for the E string of your guitar. This button actually doubles up as a control for your delay, allowing you to tap to change the speed of the delay effect if you're using one. The section below is for your microphone and instrument channel. There's an XLR and quarter inch jack socket. The three knobs next to it control volume, tone and reverb. The final section is along the top which simply consists of your USB port and headphone and auxiliary in jack. At the front of the amp is a speaker grill made from metal and it's very sturdy. There's no bending and hardly any giving it at all. There's no shortcuts in quality here. The handle at the top is also made from metal and doubles up as a tilt back stand which is useful for a small amp that isn't particularly powerful. At the back there's a switch and a socket for your power supply. At the bottom is a panel held on by Velcro. Remove this and you'll see the space for inserting six size C batteries that allow you to go out busking with it. Overall the design quality is very impressive. So how does this amp sound? Well I'll give you a few demos with my very limited guitar skills. I'm definitely no Joe Bonamassa. As you can see I've recorded the sound from the amp using a digital portable recorder. I've not applied any post-production effects to this except some normalisation on the volume.
So you can hear the tone of the amp and for this demo I've just used the presets. Acoustic instruments sound bright and fairly loud. Distorted guitar is a bit on the quiet side but there's probably some scope for improving this with Defender Fuse software. Funnily enough the loudest sound I got from it was actually with an electric guitar on a clean sound which despite being turned up nearly as high as it can go didn't give any distortion which is quite impressive. Next, let's take a look at the Fender Fuse software. This software allows you to change amp settings with a few clicks of the mouse and then save them to your amp. The software is very intuitive. You can change which preset you're on by clicking the arrows next to the preset title at the top, or alternatively, you can change them using the preset knob on the amp itself. You can add virtual foot switch effects, which are added in the signal chain before they reach the amp. To do this, just click one of the empty boxes and add your desired effect. You can then add additional instruments in the chain after the amplifier, again by clicking the boxes. For the amplifier and every effect you add, you can adjust the settings inside the software and save it to your amp. While this doesn't allow for much customization on the fly, it does allow you to have a great deal of effects and tone control. As this is primarily a practice amp, the lack of tone control on the amp itself is just about forgivable. If you're looking to explore some more, then I recommend taking a look at the Fender Fuse community where you can download many user-generated presets to emulate the sound of your favourite bands. You can also download backing tracks to play along to. Another thing worth mentioning is the auxiliary input. This allows you to connect a phone, tablet, computer or MP3 player to play music through your amp. This is great for practising along to backing tracks. The sound of the backing tracks being played through the amp is surprisingly good. There's a decent amount of bass output, which is pleasantly surprising, as I was expecting a trebly tin fest in terms of frequency response. So who's this amp for? Well, for less than £100, don't expect it to replace any of your bigger amplifiers for rehearsing with. It's got a decent guitar tone, but it won't blow you away. But that's kind of the point. You won't be bringing this to band practice, but it is a very convenient, feature-heavy practice amp. You can have this anywhere in your house and quickly plug in whenever you want to practice something. The battery power means you can avoid having to set anything up. You just need the instrument and a cable, and that alone makes practicing a lot more convenient. I'd also recommend this amp to beginner guitarists who are looking to experiment with tone and effects. I would have loved one of these when I was starting out on my guitar many years ago. Being able to add effects means you're not limited to the old beginner's budget problem. I remember wishing I had the money to buy effects pedals after about three weeks of learning guitar. This is a great little practice amp. Is it any good for busking and live performance? Mm, well, that will depend on where you are. If it's in a fairly quiet environment and not too open, then you'll probably get away with it. Remember though, this is a 7 watt practice amp, so you won't be pushing much air. If busking is your main objective, I'll probably save up for a bit longer and get a Roland Cube Street instead. But if practicing is the main objective, then you can't go far wrong with this. So there's our review of the Fender Passport Mini. Uh, really, really nice amp. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe and we'll be back soon with another video.